All right, we're here. We've made it. Welcome, Jamie Cole. Jamie is the person, not the person, the presence. Person, such a terrible thing. I apologize. The presence behind this lovely place called Tongue Twisters. Is it right? Tongue Twisters. Tongue Twisters. That's, that's the name we're giving it. But it's actually um, Brass Lion Gin Distillery. That's right. BLD is what I call it. All right. So let's just explain the whole setup first, because people may think it's just a normal bar, which is, isn't exactly. Uh, we come here to learn, right? Mm -hmm. Over to Jamie. So we are Singapore's first full-fledged micro distillery. What this means is that, you know, you, you come into this building, right? On the first floor is where all the magic happens. All the gin distillation, whiskey distillation, everything takes place there. Um, right now we're… And, and that's because if you drink too much, you only have one floor to go down. Exactly. That's, right. that's the thinking behind it, which I appreciate. Only three steps. But three if you steps? Climb these stairs, we are actually right here in our tasting room. And so this functions as a restaurant and a bar. Right. Um, and you can do tastings of all our products here as well. So here's the regular bar for the regular patron and there's the student of gin. Downstairs is where you learn. all where we make the gin and you're not allowed inside. Okay. Yeah. Because so. I'm underage. Sweet of you, Jamie. <laughs> no, so it's only it's only um so the downstairs area is actually um the manufacturing facility. So unfortunately, the Ooh. government has uh, said Ooh. that only so illegal. Only um, distillers can be inside, yeah, all right. uh, unless you're part of the tour. Of I can get. I live in India. I can get myself a uh, license. It's not yeah, difficult. I'm sure. Yeah. And come back fast. I noticed yeah. also there's parking. There's a lovely white car which apparently you own, which is parked outside. <laughs> parking for one one lot. But not bad. Everybody complains that Singapore is almost as bad as Mumbai. There's a parking issue and cars are expensive, but it's great to see. Yeah, and somebody there's, yeah, and there's a huge car park right behind, so yeah. no issues on that. Fantastic. So if you want to come, this is the place to go to. You can park your car or get off in a taxi or whatever you want to. Yeah, but if you you know drink a lot of gin, then you know. Don't need to drive. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but you can pretend to drive in the back seat. That's what I do if I'm feeling negative. I, I call the cab and I sit in the back seat and I go, mm. <laughs> I make sounds, I play the horn, everything. Jamie's still laughing. It's only five minutes in the interview. Wait for 10. Yeah. All right, Jamie, let's go back to your life before okay, we come yes. back to the bar. So, this is again a unique feature of uh, Singapore gin crafting. We in India think of beer crafting, not so much the mm. other spirits. You guys have got into gin in a big way. We'll come to gin. But I was reading the biodata. And it says that Jamie at seven won the hopscotch uh, competition in school. I said, leave that aside. That's not so important. But you did. Is it true that you actually wrote to 500 distillers across the world as a young girl trying to find apprenticeship or learning? Yes, that's true. Um, so I actually got my start in F&B. So I opened restaurants and bars first. Mm -hmm. And after that, I decided I wanted to open a distillery. And so what we did was we wrote to all these distillers because there wasn't a distillery in Singapore. So there was no one who could teach us how to distill. And wow. so we wrote to all these different places all around the world, but… Oh, and uh, nobody, nobody… It says said, less than 1% replied. Yeah, yeah. Nobody said So yes. 500, 1%… <laughs> they, re they, replied, they replied to say no, but… <laughs> well, they replied to say no. That's just decent. At least they replied. But five replied to say possibly. To say, uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. So anyway, but anyway, through friends of friends, we managed to find certain… Um, you did the Indian thing. We, you used influence <laughs> and found… Just, a network. Batch our way through. Yeah. yeah so, open the door somehow. so I did a stint in um, the US. And we entered the UK and finally we ended up at the Black Forest in Germany where we found our master distiller. Lots of questions. But first let's go back because uh, you opened bars. So you were already in the business. Yes. Why did you think at that point, because you're already doing well and opening many bars, so you're a consultant for lots of people. What did right. you think of distilling as a, as a new thing? What, what did that catch your fancy? I think, you know, through running restaurants and bars, I think uh, I noticed one shift which was that people were starting to care a little bit more about what they drank, right? I think back in the day, you're just like, oh, just give me a, a gin and tonic, vodka soda, whatever it is, doesn't matter. But actually, you know, the spirit that you drink is very important because you're ingesting it. So it affects how you feel the next day. But True. also people are starting to care a bit more about what am I drinking? Where is it from? How is it made? Things like that. Um, so that was the growth of like craft spirits. I understand where you're coming from because I'm very sensitive to all this myself. Personally, when I was drinking, I don't drink now. But I used to always ask them in Hindi, Sabse sasta kya hai, which translates basically to what is the cheapest drink you've got. Mm. I've always kept that up and I felt mm. that's a very noble way to, you know, interact with the, the catering section mm. when you go to bars or restaurants. Right. So I'm glad that it's changed from there and moved on to this, where people are thinking what's going into the concoction, 
what are the after effects, which yeah. one would be slightly better to have. Mm. And in Singapore, it seems to be all about this sustainability and this health bit where you sort of, you know, go from whatever you're having to producing it organically or finding a way where it's less unhealthy, if not healthy. Yeah. So that seems to be very big in this, yeah. what we're discovering. Yeah, and it's also a great way to showcase like, you know, our part of the world. Because, you know, gin, for example, uses a lot of botanicals. Mm -hmm. And um, the gins that we see out there is, you know, tr usual botanicals. But I really wanted to feature… What did you… What, sorry, what, usual botanicals about like potato? <laughs> no, that's vodka. Juniper uh, berries, for example, that yeah. is um, the main thing that's, uh, that makes gin gin. Without juniper berries, it can't be called gin. Wow. Yeah, so… The usual botanicals, right? But then um, I wanted to feature Southeast Asian botanicals, especially botanicals that we're familiar with mm -hmm. um, in Singapore. Things that we use in our, you know, part of culture, our cuisine. Um, and just, I guess as a Singaporean, I just felt it was a huge shame that we didn't have a local spirit to call. You had a national spirit about this. You were like, this is very important from the country's point of view. No, I'm making fun, but it's true. It's fair. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> because, um, you know, I took one year to travel the world. I just bought a one-way ticket and went all around the world. And well, When was this? So you had a one-year hiatus? Between, I had a one-year hiatus, yeah. Between uh, working and between actually going to become an apprentice and learning the craft? Yeah, I had… Um, yeah, so I, I ran my… Are you very rich? No, I ran bar. I ran my bars. I won a competition and I won my. Go slow. Bike. You're telling us so many things. I, I, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> so I, many questions. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I'm drunk. You know, because the girls talking so quickly, I can't remember anything. Okay. So, so you won a competition. Yes. What? Meaning? I, I won a bar. That was how you I won a bar. I won a bar. What a country, Singapore! Come fast. <laughs> you won a competition. You won it a was bar. a startup competition, so you could propose anything, but the the winner would get the space. Wow. And and so I won the space. Ah, wow, so that wow. was my first fantastic. my first venture. Okay, so where's that space? Somewhere is it still existing? It's still um, 14 years later, it's still around. Wow, excellent. Yeah. So you could take a year off now because you you sort of started a business and No, so actually huh. what happened was that they kicked us out after. <laughs> so that's why I went away for one year. Because they kicked us out, but they invited us back one year. So Jamie is a criminal and was on the run. No, okay, so Okay, let's back up. It's a lot, of, it's a lot of content. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they gave me six months free rent. And so when I won this space, I said, what happens after six months? Oh, that's not and fair. They said they don't know, right? Oh, I'm that's like, like that's a carrot that they dangle. Correct. And then... But then they said, and then you need to fit it out and do all mm. these things. So what My happened? My wife did the same thing. She said she'll be young forever. Yeah. And then, you know. And then six months later, same thing. <laughs> I wanted the space. You, and then you kick her out too? I tried. <laughs> She's stronger. Stronger. <laughs> Take supplements. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, but so, so six months, so they sort of, it's uh, what we call like a bakra or they sort of made a fool of you in a sense. Yeah. Because uh, that's sort of not really nice. You got a space for a little while and then suddenly it's gone. And then they didn't negotiate beyond. So it's up to us to take the oh, conversation forward. So you're supposed to pay yourself, you, you and the If we landlord. wanted to, yeah. But oh. ultimately they had other users for the space. So we were asked to vacate. Um, vacate but then they said, we still have enough space for you, but it's only available in a year. So what happened was that we took a hiatus for a year, right? And so in that year, I actually, you know, just wanted to explore the world. And so I bought one-way ticket. Where did you go? Um, so I went to Europe, you know, Iceland. I stayed in Spain, learned Spanish. I traveled. You learned Spanish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always want... Wow, so you, you just went Spanish for a week for like come back Spanish. Three months, could speak Spanish. And I did Latin America, backpack the whole of Latin America by myself, solo. Really? Yeah. Was it fun? Yeah, it was fun. No yeah. trouble from the local amigos? I mean... Huh? All, you know, just, you got to be a bit smart about it. All right. Yeah. You handled it well. Don't try India then. <laughs> Don't try India. <laughs> no, I, I did India, I've done India. You came to India. So India? Where did you come? When? Where, like which Where, parts? Uh, Mumbai. Mumbai? Yeah. What a beautiful city it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good, yeah. Did you have fun? So, yeah, yeah. Do you remember awesome. any places? Yeah, it was all of them. I'm sure Satish could tell you more about yeah. where we went. Um, yeah. But yeah, we went to all the different mills and stuff. We were looking to open a bar. Oh, the Parel, the mid-Mumbai mid oh, section where yeah. all the old mills were. Oh, the yeah. Parel, yeah. Wally, yeah. Say, I remember right. that part because we were spending a lot of time there looking at spaces. Yeah. And things you like call that. me, I'll sort this out for you from here. You don't have to come back again. Don't worry. <laughs> all right. Okay. So you took the year off. You did all this. But actually, your year off is, is you're not telling the full truth. Because your year off, you're doing sort of pre-work. No, year off was a vacation. It wasn't to do work. It mm -hmm. was, you know, going to different countries and just okay. experiencing, right? But as one does in… If you've been in a food and bar you pick scene things, for so yeah. long, you naturally, you know, I like food, I like drinks, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you eat and drink your way around the world. And I think that's the best part to experience the culture as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so every country that I went to, I realized that 
they had, you know, something native to call their own. This is our local spirit or this is our local brew, something like that, right? And then, you know, as I started trying all these different things from different countries, I just felt it was a huge shame. That was when the Ooh. Singaporean thing came out. I was like, how come we don't wow. have anything like that? Because they must be asking you that, right? Yeah. When you go there and, yeah. you, and they tell you, this is our thing. And what is your thing? And then what is like, our oh. thing? And we're like, oh, yeah. we have uh, the Singapore sling, but, yeah. you know, it's, not it's quite Singapore. It's a yeah. cocktail and it's not even made with any, they put yeah. foreign gin inside. What about tiger know? beer? Tiger beer, yes, it's started local. I don't think it's it's they sold, so it's not local anymore. But oh. it, it was, you know. The, yeah, the but I remember the first time I came here, they all said Tiger Beer, Tiger Beer, Singapore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've given you one more for what it's worth, even if it's more relic of the past. Quickly, let's just go through because the colors, I, I think that's the whole thing we're trying to discuss here is that you're learning the craft of beer and crafting, uh, gin and crafting <clears> it. <throat> uh, I've had a few. Uh, so they look distinctly. I mean, when I was growing up, gin always looked the same. Yes. I can't remember one bottle being different from the other except the labeling. Yeah. Here, uh, I know we have closes, but we'll show them. Each one is a distinct color. I mean, just look at this. This looks almost like a rummy rum color. That, that yeah. is a whiskey, actually. Yeah. Um, the last so one is, is a whiskey. The last one is actually Singapore's first whiskey. You broke the line, huh? We broke the line. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> huh. So Singapore's first whiskey. We actually. So you're saying you're claiming this is the first uh, home ever. Grown yeah. Live on our podcast. No one else has got the footage of the first whiskey ever. Plus, of course, all the first gins, which is this beautiful bottle of. Brass line, uh, I can't read without my glasses. Brass. It's Singapore's first. Singapore's first. Yeah, single malt whiskey. So you, we just launched will, will you be getting like uh, Singapore's highest national honor? I mean, you should be in line for that by now. <laughs> We're putting the name back right there. Yeah. And then, so these colors can you quickly explain. So the rest are all gins. Yeah. And how do you get this such a variety of colors? Obviously, it's the botanicals yeah. I've been picking up on my gin. Learning, learning, yeah. So we wanted to really introduce Singapore or, I mean, everyone to the world of gin, right? Because some people come in and, you know, their friends bring them and they say, oh, I don't drink gin, I don't like gin, I don't know how to drink gin, whatever it is. And we said, you know, actually the gin, the world of gin is very diverse, you know. Yeah. I think when people think of gin, they usually, like, you're right, right? They think of the classic dry style, like the London dry style yeah. of gin, right? And um, that is one style. Um, but we wanted to show them that, you know, there's all these other variants. If you don't like um, the dry style, usually the, they don't like juniper berries, which is the, the base of gin. But they said, you know, we have our floral version, our, you know, spice version. There's a whole new world out there. And the taste and, is very different. And it's all very, very different. So then there's something for everyone, right? Wow. So going back to the Singapore dry, I guess that's our take on the classic London dry style. Which one? This one, The right? first one, yes. Let me pick it up. Singapore dry. There you go. Singapore dry. So that is our take on the classic London dry style, which is that style of gin that everyone knows. Um, but over here, we use we distill in the same distilling tradition, but we use um, you know local botanicals, which you'll see later on. Uh, but the torch ginger flower and like galangal in and fact, pomelo and now that you mentioned it, I'm I, I I'm going to actually sort of help you make a a brand new gin, which will be in honor of my greatness coming to this place, etc, etc, right? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Uh, let's quickly try and understand the process of, uh, you begin by making gin. What is the first step that you have to do when you want to craft something? What is the first number one thing that you do? You prepare all the botanicals. So, which you have to choose. Which we had to, yeah, it was a long process to R&D to figure out which botanicals would blend together. And now we have a nice mix of 22 botanicals that we have to weigh out and process. But then how, because you're allowing us to have a combination of maybe 5 to 10 or whatever of any of these. So how can you guarantee the combination is going to work? For ourselves or? No, for the person who's... Uh, yeah, tasting. so that's part of the, you know, the whole class where we look the at it. of and the we, gin. We yeah. see how and we tweak your recipe accordingly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you usually when people do the gin class of us, they come in with a vision, right? We want our gin to taste like this. Ooh. And then we try to help them, you know, match up, right? Like... Yeah, less citrusy, more floral, we'll, we'll tweak it. Oh, they sound like an advertising conversation. Uh, I want it to be just a little bit more puffy, you know, not very clear. You just have to figure it out from there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and how much would it cost? Um, the gin? Yeah. So the first one is uh, 98 and then it's 108 and then it just, yeah. 98 Singapore dollars. 98 Singapore dollars, yeah. I, I have no idea what the normal rates are. Is, is that good? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> how much is that? I could get 14 Burger King meals. Um, yeah, uh, but then, but then, for, but this is like more than fourteen drinks, so you know. Yeah, that's true. Is it so, more than fourteen drinks? Yeah. There's only Sixteen one way to, drinks. One way to find out. We have an alcoholic on our set. Silvery, start. <laughs> the clock's ticking. Hurry up. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about uh, Singapore mm -hmm. because the reason we're here is I got this free trip to Singapore because uh, my mother-in-law finally decided that I needed something 
And so she sent me the tickets and I've just come here and I'm having a great time. So try to learn just, and when you meet people who are really Singaporean, even better in the sense that get a sense of the place. So what does, cliche question, what does made in Singapore mean to you? And I know one answer is this, uh, I mean, very patriotic of you in, in a sense. We already know that because you created a whole brand. You've created a very, very local Singapore gin culture and whiskey as well. So I know that part, but what else? What else? What is Singapore? When you think of Singapore, what does it mean? I was made in Singapore, so… Fair enough. So, you know, yeah. we created this brand, of course, everything else is made in Singapore. But I think beyond all of that, um, I think it's really about showcasing and highlighting, even though, you know, it sounds a bit cliche, but really using something that locals can identify with when they drink, right? Like, oh yeah, you know, we use the torch ginger, um, the butterfly pea flower, for example. We use it in our local Peranakan cuisine. And right. I know you guys went to Juchet. Um, yeah, we went. Well. I, yeah. Just now, again. <laughs> I, that's because the taxi got lost, but oh. we were there. You were there, yeah. yeah. And, and so the, the butterfly pea is used a lot in local cooking, right? Um, in the blue coconut rice, for example, or this local dessert that you see called the kueh salad, which is blue glutinous rice mm -hmm. with a um, layer of kaya, um, coconut jam. Um, so, you know, we see it a lot and I think it's more like um, taking that and putting it into spirits as well. Mm -hmm. um, and which is why you see that the label actually features the classic Peranakan towels. Um, so it's all about that, right? Wow. This, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It takes me a little while because of my age to pick up what you're saying visually. So you have to give me a few seconds. We always play music at the right point. This podcast is super successful. You have no idea. We have more than 20 million followers in one state alone. Wow. And we don't even bother to go beyond that. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I hope you watch. We need you. I, I, will, I will click <laughs> on it. Yeah, please, for the please. views. Okay. <laughs> Coming back to the Made in, made in Singapore. Well, I, I, you know, like if somebody asks you what's it like to be an Indian, you know, I'm saying you know, warm, loud, generous, don't understand lines, whatever. What would you, what would you say about um, uh, a Singaporean, a little cliche, but how would you, if you had to describe a Singaporean, just a generic Singaporean, what would you say? I think generally Singaporeans, you know, if you meet them for the first time, they might come across as a bit reserved. Yeah, a um, little bit. Yeah, <laughs> little bit. Not you actually. Yeah. You, you were extremely warm immediately. Oh. But then again, I'm a very attractive man, so I, let's discount that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you see that close. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think once you get to know uh, Singaporeans, like they, they generally warm up and mm -hmm. generally quite yeah hospitable. Actually, polite. Polite. Everybody's very polite. Like yeah. nobody raises their voice really. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, we were blocking somebody's path just now in the morning while shooting. The lady was uh, telling us to move away, but in a very polite uh, fashion. That comes with the whole reserveness as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not that she wasn't upset, but there was no no let yeah. out of emotion. Yeah. Polite, yeah, Polite, I would yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. And would you say progressive? Progressive. I think Singaporeans are generally very open to, we're a small country, right? So a lot of us travel out yeah. as well. So generally quite open and receptive to new concepts. And um, everything that's open. Back to the gym. Yeah, everything I've opened actually, all my FMB concepts were all first of its kind in Singapore. Um, and but so bringing all, new concepts in. Yeah, but after all this time of all these bars and the travels and all that, what made you confident that gin would be like a big hit out you of know, all just, the spirits? Out of all the spirits. I think gin is perfect for Singapore's weather, right? Because oh. we're hot, um, it's tropical, it's refreshing, you know, hot summer day on the beach or whatever. Oh. I just want to drink something like this. If only I could reach it. <laughs> One Cheers, day. I'll drink without <laughs> Cheers. Ah. I love these big glasses. Oh. So you want something cold, something refreshing, right? I, I think gin is perfect for, for that. There you go. Frankly, the, I cannot uh, disagree. I remember growing up that very few people order gin. Mm. I may be wrong, but this yeah, is back yeah, in India. Yeah. And if we went, a variety of people, let's say the whole group here went out, yeah. would, the men would be mostly whiskey, the women mostly vodka, and then later on wine. Fair enough. It was divided more like that. And yeah. gin was almost like this person who had traveled abroad and come back and, you know, gin, gin lit or something. What was the first one I remember? Is it gym lit or gimlet? Whatever that gimlet, is. Gimlet, gimlet, yeah. yeah. So that was a little popular. Okay. That's it. Okay. Yeah. But now, you, you know. I think in recent times, it's, it's changed. Shifted a bit. Or maybe they have momentums, like how colors in fashion or whatever. Yeah, waves, waves. Yeah. Thanks for saving me. Yeah. All right. Um, how was your personal journey influence your passion for crafting unique gene ex gene experiences in Singapore? You've sort of answered this already. Okay. Uh, your personal journey, right? Uh, from the beginning, traveling all over the world, you were very clear. I want to find something which is our own, our own local thing. I got to have something, and you've done that. Yeah. So well done. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think when traveling the world, I was purely on vacation. But as a you know entrepreneur, I always have many many ideas, and so that was something that evolved naturally and. Mm -hmm. That was why towards the end of the year, mm -hmm. I said, let me divert my trip and enroll myself in distilling school. So that was, it just came about along the way. I wasn't like, you know, specifically looking. So you, we have the same problem with cheers. So in India, I have foreign friends come and uh, they can't understand why all Indians say cheers. 
You go to North of India, South of India, when they drink, the ones, you know, who, who, who some don't even say it. But whoever says it, they say cheers. We don't have any other words. So what's the yeah. Indian word for cheers? Yeah. So I'm going to work on that so that we find our own word and be proud of our own word. For now, I'm saying Indians watching, don't say cheers. Say, okay. 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 It's nice? Not, nice? No, not nice. That's our word. <laughs> but we can't keep borrowing these other people's words. And the French guy is wondering why he yeah. says cheers, you know. Exactly what you went through. I feel what you're saying. Uh, while she laughs in a sinister fashion behind my back, I carry on. Uh, you've taken us to the gin. Uh, what, what is unique about the distillery is that it's more like an ordinary place to buy and taste gin. It's an experience. Tell us more about that. So it's both a place to buy and taste gin as well as make gin. Which you've sort of answered again. Yeah, I mean, you, it's, 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 an, it's, an, it's an all-in-one kind of thing, right? It's, you have multi… Like, so downstairs, where the manufacturing is, we have the tour. So if you don't want to, you know, get yourself involved in the whole gin-making process and it's quite involved, it's about three hours long, right? So you can just go for a tour, see how we make our gin, let's explain to you, and then you come up and do a tasting of the three gins. Okay. That's just a tour. I have to clarify quickly so nobody gets confused. So the tour is right at the bottom, which is two or three hours long. Where you're just listening and watching. Listening. Then there's the making, which the is making, which, which is like a student. Yes, and that's more involved. Right? Which I did in the middle of that yes. show, and I was fantastic. Jamie, you were just saying amongst the best students. Best of, gin I've ever heard. Best tried. gin, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I was a little upset you poured it down the toilet okay. like that, but yeah. you know, I mean, that's because you don't, it was unique and you didn't want to share it. I'll save. I've saved the bottle forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing this podcast. <laughs> And then you've got the bar, which is a regular bar with uh, everything. With, with only our products, of course, but yeah. um, in different ways. But there's the whiskey as well. Uh, yes, we have whiskey as well. But no beer, right? No beer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is there a reason for them to think about some of the bars don't have beer? And, uh, just um, have the actually, well, most regular bars have everything, everything, but because we're kind of showcasing what we have and we make, you know, so it's only all our products and we're a distillery, so we don't, we don't make beer. All right. Yeah. We've almost reached the end. Uh, is there anything else you want to add? Um, and is there any one brass line gin that you particularly like the most? One brass, brass line gin. I think it differs according to the time of the day and my mood and things like that. So yeah, I don't know. Um, there's something new that we've done. It's a tea based gin, which is quite interesting. This one? Yeah, the jasmine, the pearl jasmine. So hold it up. All right. We we were starting a tea series, so we've. Um, We've uh, blended different tea blends and put jasmine them. tea feel to so, gin. So yeah, we did a osmanthus oolong tea gin, and now we have a pearl jasmine gin, and we're working on a new one. So it's kind of like a little mini series, so to speak. Wow! You think you'll ever get bored of gin? It's gin, 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 gin all the time. Gin, gin, gin. No, it's all different flavors, right? It's like, do you ever get bored of food? But it's all always different. True. Yeah, but so. would you move on from here to the next spirit or gin? Is yeah, it? I mean, we've moved on to whiskey, whiskey. Um, yeah. and and we we've done other stuff as well. Um, it's just that. You know, we can't launch everything that we… We like to tinker about and make different things. We made rum before. We, we launched a liqueur with um, Tiger Beer actually. We did a liqueur for them. Sour Plum Calamansi liqueur. So we've done different things. Um, but there's only so many things that we want to launch. We want to kind of focus on a few key ones. Yeah. Okay, last two questions. Okay. Uh, how drunk have you got? Which is the worst, worst drunk that you've got? I actually don't get drunk. You don't get drunk? You're able to hold your drinks? Yeah, I mean, you'll never see me like, I've never been like… No, well, there's know. no video if you're saying that. We don't, we, we checked. We, we did yeah, I know when I was young, there was no video. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> back in Brazil. Age. Back in the day. <laughs> yeah. But, but the, no, I don't actually, yeah. I, but what about tours now? Are you going to go for another long tour? It seems like every time you did that, there's like a change of the guard. Mm. You come back refreshed with new ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Planning, yeah. plotting. Another yeah. one? Something else? I don't know. Okay, you never Full know. of ideas, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, we'll end with the cheers. It's all about gin. It's about cheers? gin making. Not gin. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thanks, thanks. Oh, yeah. You saved us. You say okay. cheers. Yeah. yeah. You spread the word, huh? huh? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Here it is. The Brass Lion uh, Distillery. All right, before we say goodbye, it's time to check out uh, Gelato, Birds of Paradise, and whatever else we can find. Just now in a second. Do you know what uh, Gelato, Birds of Paradise is? Yeah. The ice cream? The ice cream place, yeah. yeah, yeah Try yeah. the chrysanthemum ice cream. That's my Which one? They have a chrysanthemum we ice did. cream. We did. Oh. I mean, I, I will. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we did and I will at the same time. You did yeah. and you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love to take things I can't pronounce. It's always the best. Yeah. yeah. Chrysanthemum ice cream. But in the meantime, it's us chilling out with some gin in the middle of the day, by the way. Do people, are people out all day? Yeah, it's a hot day today, especially. Yeah. It's a yeah. rare hot day, so it's perfect for okay. a glass of gin, right? So don't waste time looking at this silly podcast. Drop in. <laughs> mm. Do you mind if I knock it back? Uh. 
Okay. Would you like that? Okay. 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 <laughs>